Hello. Well, it's often been said that the character and style of a town is reflected in its football club, and nowhere is that truer than in Yorkshire. Over the next three weeks, we'll be sampling a little of that character. First, Barnsley, with memories of a cup triumph going back to before the First World War. Then Huddersfield, a club with a long and distinguished First Division history. For Huddersfield, it was the triumphant twenties with a hat-trick of league wins and three cup finals to save her. Sheffield United, one of the two great clubs in the city of Steel. United, champions and cup winners in the last century. A club whose greatness cannot be measured by their current league position, even in a promotion year. And Sheffield Wednesday, one of the oldest among the league clubs. We'll be jogging memories which take in a consistent record of cup and league wins with four championship trophies and five cup final appearances. Well, that's what's in prospect over the next three weeks. And it's in South Yorkshire that we start with Barnsley. It's always seemed to me that the blood-red shirt of Barnsley symbolises the sweat and toil of life in the capital of the South Yorkshire coalfield. The men who've worn that shirt with pride always seem to play with an earthy resolve that says volumes for their determination not to be beaten. Barnsley are nobody's pushovers. They may not be one of the game's glamour clubs, indeed Oakwell on a grey day can be a foreboding, almost haunting prospect for visitors. But Barnsley is a friendly club, proud of its tradition and, like any family, closely knit. It was a parson, the Reverend T. T. Preedy, who laid the foundations for the birth of Barnsley St. Peter's Football Club in 1887. A memorable rise to fame was not far away. But it's perhaps characters rather than cups that highlight Barnsley's history. Even the names of the players somehow suit the club. George Donkin, Ruff Fletcher, Skinner Normanton. Men with names and faces like that could never play for Chelsea. But what of Danny Blanchflower and his Irish skill and charm? He could have played for Chelsea. In fact, he managed them before skippering Spurs to the double. And then there were the skills of Arthur Kay and the goals of Tommy Taylor. Michael Parkinson, Barnsley's best-known fan, would have had all of them on his chat show, and Gordon Pallister, Jimmy Baxter, and many others. Well, two of those great names are with me in the studio, Danny Blanchflower and Parky's pal, Sidney Skinner Normanton. Together, we'll paint a picture of a club that's had so many memorable days. <laughs> Those were the days. Barnsley in the 20s were a formidable proposition, even though they could never quite get into the first division. The cobbled streets rang to the sound of clogs. The Oakwell air positively crackled on match days. There was the traditional bovril and the after-match inquests, which stretched from the pub on Saturday night through to first shift at the pit on Monday morning. Today, Barnsley Football Club is on the march again. Nellie and Nancy, who've given 32 years service to the club between them, reckon the present team is as good as any to have worn these well-ironed shirts, but the fluffy mascot has seen it all before. These young men are the future of Barnsley. On grey and misty mornings, they learn their trade, spurred on by mentors who command the utmost respect. It's been a good season. They've recalled those halcyon days, and perhaps the present stars will be as well remembered as the greatest names, Johnny Steele and Gordon Pallister. This club, I'll speak on my behalf, and I'm sure John agrees with me, that this has been my life. And I'd like to say this, I, I'd, I'd die a happy man. If this club got in, in the first division for the first time in its history, I'd die a happy man. I think it's a great little club, Bouncy Football Club, and probably one of the best in the country. I think the spectators of this town are wonderful. You give them the goods and on the field, they'll come and support you. And they're a great crowd. Great little town and a great little club. Gordon, what memories does looking out on the pitch evoke for you? Well, I came here in 1938 from Bradford City and uh, there were wonderful memories, particularly the team in those days before the war. I thought it was probably the best team that Barnsley have had in my uh, association, long association with the club. And, but for the war, I think that team would possibly have gone straight through and got into the first division. Mm. John, Excellent team. John, you came down from Scotland. What were your first thoughts when you arrived in Barnsley? Well, not very good when I saw the town as it was then, the cobbled streets and being wakened up at six o'clock in the morning by miners going to work on foot as they did then. <laughs> uh, 
And I honestly thought, well, I'll only be here a month or two and then I'll be on my way back. But as you know, events proved otherwise. Uh, having lived in this town for a few months, I, I really got to love the place, the people and the football. He's done a fair job, hasn't he, Gordon, actually, when you think back over all those well, years? Well, you see, John has been here all these years, and he, I think he's had every job at the football club. He's been player, he's been coach, he's been manager, he's been secretary, and now he's general manager. In the 50s, Barnsley unearthed a gem of a centre forward. Tommy Taylor was England's successor to Lawton, Milburn and Loft House. But tragedy struck with the Munich air disaster. Fate was cruel, Taylor's life was lost. But Steele, who discovered him, has never forgotten him. Tommy would have gone on to play for England for years, I'm certain of Indeed. that. He was, I always rated him with the Tommy Lawtons with his head work. He was a great header of the ball, Tommy, and could finish with either foot, could shoot with either foot. And a very good type of lad, good type of lad. We, uh, we loved Tommy here. And uh, it was tragic for us when he had to go, but even more so, of course, mm. when he lost his life. I thought, John, that uh, it was... Uh, Every manager's dream of the yes. perfect centre forward because he had aerial power, he had power on the ground, and th that boy, but uh, for the tragic accident, he would have broken all records, goal scoring records, in my opinion, anyhow, yeah. and possibly got more caps than any other centre forward in the country, yeah, in good. the history of the game. And a good lad. Good and a great lad. Yeah. Now, then, let's move on to a certain legendary Skinner Normanton who seems to have be become more famous since he finished playing than he was at the time. Gordon? Well, Sid was. Uh, is a very, very strong player and a devastating tackle, you know. He's the sort of player that you'd rather play with than against. Uh, a very good lad to have in your team, a hundred percenter. And a destroyer. What I, not a creator, but a destroyer. Well, that's what Parky's always put across, isn't he? That he was absolutely terrifying. Was he as terrifying as he makes out? Hey, well, I, I should imagine. I've seen a lot of players, uh, if it's been a 50-50 ball, uh, I've seen a lot of players jerk away from Normington. Here at Barnsley, they had a bit of a folk hero and a left winger called Johnny Kelly, didn't they? Tell me oh, about him. Wonderful player. John was a, a very talented, uh, gifted uh, individual. And we always used to say that when he was playing, he'd put two or 3,000 people on the gate. Uh, because he, because of his ability. He wasn't a great team player, he was an individual, but he was an entertainer, the crowd loved him. He was a bit frustrating, was he? Yes, yes. He used to beat the fullback twice instead of once, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, Danny Blanchflower, who talked a good game as well, didn't he, Gordon? Oh, yes, uh, yes, Danny was a great character. I can remember when he first came here, uh, uh, Angus Seed says, well, I thought I could talk, but he said, I think I've met by a match here. And I can always remember Jackie, his brother, Jackie Blanchard, I was saying, oh, Danny, he didn't kiss the Blanny, so only swallowed it. <laughs> That's a fair build-up, Daddy, isn't yeah, it? I think yeah. you still talk a fair game. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. I'm delighted, by the way, to see you've uh, come in your bars yes, my red socks, socks today. Yes, you've got right. them specially on for the yeah, occasion. That's right, yeah. Now, what about this chap? Actually, is it Sid or Skidder? Which do you prefer, Sid? Either. No matter to me. He's Skinner to me. He was the first character that I made contact with at Barnsley. Yeah. The first practice match on the Tuesday morning on the old ground and, and, and I'm playing and here comes Skinner towards me and I'm thinking now, is he going to go right or left? And he goes straight on, right over me. <laughs> 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 so that was a fair it's assessment. The great you thing about Skinner, the off the field you couldn't meet a nicer fella, gentle, friendly, but on the field, uh, tough and, and not dirty. Funnily enough, they say that's about Norman Hunter, who, of course, is the manager of Barnsley today, don't they? A similar type, would you have said? Yes, uh, well, uh, no, I think they're slightly different in character, yes. Mm -hmm. I think they're slightly different in character. I think Norman, you see, Norman always wanted to be a skillful player, didn't he? He told me that once. He, he, his dream was to be an attacking player, actually, rather than a defensive one. That's what... Sid, was that a fair comment that uh, we made, which said you've become far more famous since you finished playing? Well, yes, uh, it does, really. Um, Michael Parkinson made that uh, come true for me, but uh, I mean, it uh, it doesn't alter my, me at all, you know, in any shape or form. How long is it uh, since you've seen one another, by the way? Oh, a long time. Uh, seven, th seven years. Yeah, it must be that. I think what Parky was reflecting was the character in the game in those days, you know, and that 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 Skinner's character was 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 different from from the others on the team and. In, and I think that football should be a variety of characters. It's a great democracy where all sorts of people should come in. Slightly different from, from political democracy and the fact that you've got to be good enough. You've got to show you're good enough to get into the team. Then you get the vote, you know. The other way you can vote for people you don't know. 
Sid, would you agree with me that perhaps the characters have gone out of the game at the moment? They don't seem to be those sort of players like yourself who were around in the 40s and 50s. Well, no, I, th I think that's all been brought about by this uh, coaching like It's, uh, to me, you know, coaching, it's, uh, it's not, a, it, well, it's not, not in the game for me. I, if a person's got the ability to play football, he'll play football the way he's taught himself, not what somebody else t tries to teach him. Mm. You know, it's, uh, it's all, all wrong. Did that evoke many memories for you when you saw people like Johnny Steele and Gordon Pallister and Johnny Kelly and oh, yes. Tommy Taylor? Yes, uh, yeah, Tommy Taylor there, great. Same as what Gordon says and Johnny Steele. It would, it would have been, you know, the record uh, centre forward for international caps. No doubt about it. It was brilliant. Danny, when you look back, I mean, you had mm -hmm. great times with Aston Villa and Tottenham Hotspur, but what are your fondest memories of a couple of years at Oakwell? Oh, I think that I think that probably the, my time at Barnsley was the most important step in my career because Angus, I was playing in Glen Torn and Irish football, and, and and a lot of managers were looking at me but thinking I was too frail and things like that to play. Angus was the one that gave me the chance, you see. And when I came to Barnsley, uh, it was uh, it was uh, I had been in Canada doing Air Force training and all that before that, and when I came to Barnsley, it, it put my feet on the ground. I. I the people in Barnsley were great people, and, and they're nearer to reality than everybody else. And, and the, the, the town was full of character and people, people with character, uh, who, had, who hadn't got a great deal of money. And, and I think that adversity is the breeder of, of the best kind of character. And so I learned, I was lucky, that was the first step for me. You see, it could have been the last when I would have been too old to learn. But it was the first step on a, on a very important trail. Actually, you mentioned character. Just looking at some of the faces behind you here on the wall. I mean, yes. Sid, you're a Barnsley man, and they have got real character in every one of those yes, faces. Every one of them, yes, yes, it's true. Cloth cap, uh, dog bowler, even the uh, youngster in arms there. You know, oh. I mean, y you don't get that today at all. But what is different about the the tyke, the man who comes from Barnsley, as opposed to say the man from Sheffield or the man from Huddersfield? Well, I think it's uh, really with it being a mining town. You know, you've got the. Uh, and there's characters down the down the pit, you know. Well, they all come to the football matches, and this is where, where you've got your character from from the mines mostly, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, and it, uh, I used to work down the mine as well. So I mean, I, I'm a character in in my own, you know, in my own right, sort of thing. I'm sure you are. <laughs> yeah. Football's about people, isn't it? It's not about winning and losing. It's about taking part in people, and uh, and and the conflict of characters and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's really what it's about. OK, well, we'll leave it there for a moment, uh, Danny, Sid, and uh, because any peep into the past really will show that Barnsley's greatest hours came in the years prior to the First World War. As a second division, or second league side as it was then, they twice reached the cup final. In 1910, they met Newcastle United at Crystal Palace with a team of midgets by modern-day standards. Goalkeeper Fred Means was the giant of the side at 5 feet 9 and a half. The rest varied between 5 feet 5 and 5 feet 7. Well, Newcastle proved too big for them in a replay at Everton's Goodison Park. Believe it or not, we found a Barnsley man who was at the 1910 Cup final, and what's more, he still toddles down to the ground to support his club, John Willie Sheard. When was the first time you came to Oakwell? Well, I should think something about nine. Well, Alf West were playing when I was coming down. What was that, about 1904, wasn't when it? When they transferred him to, to Liverpool. Was he one of the best? He was one of the best, yes. Who are the best players you've, you've seen here? Well, I've seen Alf West, Dickie Downs, Tommy Boyle, Frank Barson, Silto, Blanche Flower, George Wall. You've a good memory, haven't you? Of, uh, George Donkin. Yeah. And how, how does this team at the moment compare with those teams that you've seen all through those years? Well, it's a very good team, this. One of the best, I should think. Do you still shout at them? No, I just, you know, I'm, I don't get too excited in my age. No. I, I don't get too excited. Now, did you go to the cup finals? Because, of course, Barnsley went into the cup final in 1910 and again in 1912. Were you there? No, I didn't go. I went to three play when they played Ever uh, Newcastle at Everton. And we lost, I think, for 3-1. I think you still think they should have won, don't you? They should have won at Palace. Yeah. Couldn't have been a paper report because it was a local referee. <laughs> it was it was Ibsen and Dodders. Right. It should have been, and we drew with it. There's one incredible thing to me, and that is that we've just taken you into the boardroom here at Oakwell. You've been inside there, and you've met Norman Hunter, the manager. 
It's the first time you've ever been in, inside the in ground. down there. Yeah. And yet you live in the street just outside yeah. the ground. I have never, I've never been inside there. But it's just like walking into my own house. The disappointment of defeat in 1910 disappeared two years later when Barnsley, with six survivors of the first final, Glendinning, Downs, Utley, Bartrop, Lillycrop and Tufnell, went all the way again. This time a Tufnell goal against West Brom brought the FA Cup to Barnsley, the only club incidentally to win the Cup in Yorkshire. That magic moment came in a replay at Bramall Lane. Enter a man who can actually say, I was there. Oh, well Wilt done. Baxter. Wilt Baxter, you're as fit as a flea, aren't you? I am. <laughs> you know, well, it's a little better I get. <laughs> I'm sure it's hard for us young'uns to imagine, you know, that you were at the Cup final, what, 70 years ago now. What do you remember of that 1912 final? It was very busy coming home because we were staying to London. <laughs> of course, you went down to Crystal Palace, didn't you? Tell yes. us about the trip. Well, How much did it cost you? Oh, it was very little. It was very little. Six shilling. Did you have a good view of the game? No, I was up a tree. Up a, what were you doing up a tree? There was one room. It was a small place. There'd only one stand. And who was in there? Well, Prince of Wales, I expect, you know, he wasn't the king or all like that. So it was a nil-nil draw at Crystal Palace. Nil -nil and, and, and then they came back to Bramall Lane. What oh, do you remember no, of the replay? No, it was one apiece, One apiece, one apiece. Ah. What do you remember of the replay? Oh, it was a good match. Good match. He could have tipped us up, Pennington, who played for England, you know, Pennington. He could have tipped our man up, but he let him, I think it was Tufnell who scored, wasn't it? Tufnell. Uh, that was it. Of course, today, when a team wins the Cup, just about everybody in the town turns out the following day to welcome the heroes home. What happened uh, in 1912 when Barnsley came home? They brought him down Shepherd Road, and a public horse called the Clarence they took the Cup on the Clarence balcony, balcony at Clarence, and the cut were all there for us to see. And I took my missus and shoved us down what you call Wesley Street, the side at Lambra. There's a Lambra there now, and they call it Wesley Street. So you can guess what it was. We were shoved down there, but that's where they put the cup when they won it, Clarence balcony. And how many turned out to see the team? Oh, there were thousands, mm. like. For a town, a little town. After all these years, what has Barnsley Football Club meant in your life? Well, I've enjoyed it because, uh, I mean, we've had good games and bad games, but uh, we, we played like some of we played this year, we played Champion League Cup. You see, it's made all the difference because the people wouldn't go down, they won't win it now. It's getting too dear. Well, they don't go down now. You can hear them going away when they play bad. We such a with such a thing of playing bad with bad teams. Let him Blackpool beat us, not how to come after all that performance. But anyway, it's been worth it, I'm sure, after, what, nearly 2,000 matches. Ah, I, I love it. I can't believe it at times. But don't think I'm lying. I don't lie. There's nothing to lie for. <laughs> Marvellous, isn't he? Two of Barnsley's young fans there, Wilf Baxter and John Willie Sheard. Wonderful characters with memories of those great moments in Barnsley's history. Danny, it really is remarkable, that, as we were saying, there's something different about a Barnsley fan, and those two chaps sum it all up in a way, don't they? Yes, I think so. But, although I do think you'll find those kind of fans uh, at most clubs, uh, I mean, whether a club is... A, a, a football club is like a, a family in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a town or a city, and it represents the kind of city because of that. Uh, we used to have an old trainer who used to say that every elephant was an animal, but every animal wasn't an elephant. What he meant, there was a variety a variety of people, and the great idea of football is, is to get unity out of a variety of characters and produce it, and nothing's more magic than that. It's very sad in a way that Barnsley has never graced the first division. I mean, why do you think that is, and will Barnsley ever make it to the first division? I think there's a, in, in, a, in any equation of success, there's, you've got to have resources. Uh, the more resources you have, the more players you can buy and things like that. And I think that Barnsley, uh, if they get to the first division, and I hope that one day they will, they'll still be stretching, you see. They'll still be stretching. It, it, uh, we were second when I was here. We were second in the league for a while. And then right, used yeah, to that's say, that's wait until November came. And when November yeah, came, we lost about that's five that's matches or six matches, yeah, yeah. and that, we were out of it. Sid, do you still follow the fortunes of the team? Uh, not very often. I've been down a couple of times this year, and, uh, but I don't get down purely and simply through hooligans. 
Really? Mm. That's what puts you off? Yes, yes, definitely. Yes. Yeah. It's, but not, not only myself, but quite a number of people. Right. They'll not take their sons down, but, you know, with, with this trouble. Now, that yeah. would never have happened in your... Do you, do you think that uh, the money has had a large part to play? I mean, what were you paid, for example, when you were a player with Barnsley? Well, when, uh, when we played, it uh, was £15 maximum wage. And now, of course, a player could earn, what, £1,000 a week, Danny? Yeah. You can't earn it, you get it. You get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a difference. True, yeah. I, I think so, yeah. Difference, yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. knows the price of things now. Nobody knows the value of them anymore. And I think uh, we live in different times, and, and they're difficult times for football because uh, football is in a, on the precipice, really, financially, you see. It was never meant to be for money. It was meant to be for glory, which is why all, all those old characters come in. Yeah. And yet, I mean, evolution has determined that there are better things about football today. I mean, training, for example, when you trained with Angus Seed, I mean, I think you hated a lot of it, didn't you? Well, uh, no, I didn't hate it. I wanted to do more with the ball, but in those days, uh, it's a very, you know, I've told it so many times. I came back from an international match and uh, I wasn't happy with my ball control and skill because I played against better players. And, I, I came to see Angus, and I think he thought I was asking for a transfer when I wanted to see him, and <coughs> he rather reluctantly he saw me, and when I came in, I said, uh, he said, well, what can I do for you? I said, well, I want to come back in the afternoon with the ball, and he nearly collapsed. That was worse than the transfer. Yeah. <laughs> he said, we, uh, we can't have that here, he says. Uh, we believe if you don't get the ball during the week, you'll want it more, all the more on Saturday. And I said, well, if you don't get it during the week, I might not recognize it on Saturday. <laughs> Something else that's changed has been the chairman. Now, Barnsley, of course, in Joe Richards, had an amazing man, didn't they, Sid? Uh, well, uh, Joe Richards, uh, he was a character himself. Joe, there's no doubt about it. But uh, I think uh, he used, well, how can I put it? He used to sort of dictate to others, you know, that uh, that's my opinion of him. He, he used Did to he sort of them? run the club, you know what I mean? Did he rule by fear? Angus Seed, well, in a certain aspect, yes. It, uh, Angus said, I, I think he would just, uh, you know, uh, go between sort of thing, you know. But uh, there's one one thing uh, I once got sent off at Sheffield United. Amazing. And, uh, well, <laughs> yes, a couple of times <laughs> in my career, a couple of times. This time I wanted a personal alien because Steve, Rich, uh, Steve Griffiths, who played them, was, was a captain. This was in the Central League. Steve Griffiths was a captain. I got sent off. I went to see Joe Richards for a do you know personal hearing at footballing? Joe just says no. It's all right. Leave it. You'll be all right. And uh, I got I got suspended for a fortnight. <laughs> now that's the character of him. That's my you know my opinion. Like right. Danny, I must just ask you about this fellow, this hard man sitting next to you. Yeah. A little bird whispered to me once that you were playing in a practice game and you walked off because he was so ferocious on the opposite side. No, that's no. not true. No, no, no. I think that's probably mixed up with the story I said earlier about meeting him about him running straight over me. No. I smacked up with that. No, I, I would have thought that uh, uh, he occasionally got sent off by referees because he was a striker. I don't think because he was a dirty player, but when you're playing a physical game, it's very difficult to draw the line. Now, with regard to Joe uh, Richards, Joe was a kind of dictator uh, because in those days, the, the officials had much more power and control over the game. The players were almost slaves in those days, so the political power was with the was with people like Joe Richards and things like that, and I suppose they tried to do their best with it. But the power now is with the players. You see, the political power because the freedom contract is now yeah. with the players. And in the game, I think that the priorities are wrong now. You see, I think the game should come first because if there was no game, there'd be no clubs, no players. I think the club should come second, and then the players should come third. And it's the other way around now. I'd like to end by asking you both <coughs> just what. Barnsley has meant to you. It's been a huge slice of your lives. Sid, yes, you've ten, always lived ten in the years town. Out of my life, anyway. And, uh, I, I really enjoyed it while I was down there. It was, you know, I, I mean, met some great characters like Danny, Jimmy Baxter, Johnny Kelly, Gavin Smith, as uh, Danny was remarking earlier on about Gavin. Uh, where does he work? You know, I said, well, he drives as fast as he used to run. I said, well, if he does, it's dangerous, you see. <laughs> Gavin was a flyer and I used to hit long balls for him. But I, I, it, it, Barnsley to me was a most important step in my career at the right time. I got in the right direction in the right place in the right time. And I, I remember playing in reserves with Johnny Steele, uh, who, who I had a relationship with him, and then Steve Griffiths, the inside, the inside, come from Portsmouth and lived up here. I spoke to him on the phone a couple of weeks ago. He was a great, and, and Gordon was a wonderful captain, Gordon Pallister. Yes, then there was play people like Archie White and Dave Lindsay, who was my right back, 
Story about Dave Lindsay one day. I used to like to take short free kicks, and Dave was all screaming to take long ones. And we're, and we're playing in the rain, and the fans had moved around to both sides, you see. And, and, and when I looked back, the ball was there, and Dave was missing. You see, he used to run that far back to kick the ball. He tripped over the wall at the far end, and then was lying over the wall. <laughs> but he was a great character. And Bannister, we used to have to drag him out of the pub to play on Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was Angus. Angus owned a pub, and if we lost a cup match away from home, it used to take us two days to get back because he didn't want to get back before the pub was closed because he'd get some criticism. It was, it was well, great days, mon wonderful. A lot of fun in it, obviously. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's been marvellous seeing you both yeah. again, and I hope you've enjoyed my, meeting my pleasure, each other yeah. after all this. Yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure to see you. Sid, Danny, thanks very much indeed. Well, the pride and the passion shown by Danny and Sid here is being carried on today by men like Mick McCarthy and Phil Chambers, Ian Banks, all local lads who, if they weren't gifted with sufficient skill to make the grade, would probably be cheering their team on from the terraces. There's a great camaraderie at Barnsley. It binds the club together and that's its strength and as anyone who ever played the game will tell you a team that's together one for all and all for one takes some beating that's Barnsley